Hi, I'm Alistair, and in this video I'd like to teach you how to make this escape room puzzle, uh, which uses a number of key switch locks. And players find keys in the room, and when they unlock all of the key switches at the same time, it releases this magnetic lock, which could open a box or a chest or a door to a new area, for example. Now, um, on the board here, you'll see I've got um, four key switches, but this will actually work with any number of switches. Um, I've got the magnetic lock, which is being controlled by a relay, and I've got a power supply. Now, you'll see that I haven't got an Arduino or other microprocessor, which I normally use in my puzzles. But you can still change the behaviour of how you'd like this puzzle to work by using different sorts of uh, key switch lock. So suppose that players had discovered a blue key somewhere else in the room and having done so they can bring it over to the blue lock here, insert the key and twist it round. And that has unlocked this particular switch here. And you'll notice that um, having turned the key the switch will remain in its new state. Um, so I don't need to keep on holding the key down, it's going to stay like that. However, with this particular switch here, even having changed the state, it's possible to remove the key. Now, that's not great in an escape room situation. Generally speaking with escape rooms, you want to have a correspondence of one key to one lock. And so, having removed the key, I'm actually now able to try this in other locks. And in fact, this one, it will even turn in as well. So I've been able to unlock two switches with a single lock. Now, the reason for that is that these two switches are keyed to use the same number key. Uh, this key here is a key 355, hopefully you can see that. Um, and it is possible to order locks that are um, designed to use different uh, types of keys, different number of keys. So one solution to this problem is to ensure that uh, however many key switches you want to use for your puzzle, each one uses a unique key. But that's not always that easy to do. I've used suppliers that have uh, claimed that they're going to supply with, with uniquely keyed locks and in fact they've arrived and they've all used the same key. So that doesn't always work. However, there are alternatives. Um, this lock here, even though it is keyed to use the same type of key, won't release the lock uh, when the lock has been changed state. So when it's off, I can pull the lock out, uh, pull the key out, sorry. But when I've twisted the key in it, I can no longer remove the key from it. So um, if all of the locks were set to be this kind of switch here, um, you could have four keys and four locks. Any key would operate any lock, but in order to operate them all at the same time, you would actually have to have discovered four keys. That's still not a great solution, um, but at least it solves the initial problem of being able to unlock all the switches to the same key. Uh, let me now return that key uh, into the correct lock, and I will actually take the yellow key, which uh, like I showed, it's still a 355 key, and I will activate the yellow lock with that. Okay, now, these two uh, switches here, these are a different style again. So let's now take a look at the purple key. And with this one, when I insert it in here and twist it round, but then when I release the key, uh, the switch returns to its initial position. So this is what's called a momentary key switch lock. Uh, it's got two states, just as these do, but in order to get it to stay in that state, I actually have to keep the key held down. So it's much like a, a car ignition, for example. You have to turn and hold the key to get it to change state. And this is another way of solving the problem of making sure that um, players actually discover the correct number of keys for the locks. Because in this one, um, to change the state, the key physically has to be present. And also it has to have someone turning it. So, um, in order, we're kind of getting more complex puzzles here. This one just required players to find a single key and locate all of the locks and turn them. With this one here, we had to locate all the locks and uh, the correct number of keys to turn them. Or if you get the one that is keyed to a unique key, you have to have uh, the correct key in each padlock. This one here, we have to have located all of the locks and all of the keys, and also have players simultaneously twisting them to solve the puzzle. 
And uh, just to demonstrate that, I've got one more momentary lock at the end. So with these two inserted and already held in their position, I'm now going to simultaneously turn these last two locks. And when I do this, this will form a circuit here, which will switch the relay and the mag lock will release. Hopefully, here goes. There we go. So this is one of the um, key switch locks which I'm using. So just let me show you how it works in a bit more detail. Um, so if you squeeze this button on the underneath here, it will come apart into two sections here. Um, this section here, if you drill a 22 mil hole in the wood there, insert that in and just tighten that uh, nut on the back to secure it in place. And that's actually the key mechanism itself. So this is the part that determines the behavior, whether it's going to be a, a momentary or a locking or a two position or a three position switch. Uh, that's determined in this part here. And then this part here, these are actually the electrical contact blocks. Um, and then it just goes together again uh, like that and secures in place. So you'll see here, there's actually uh, four terminals on this uh, block here. We've got two on this side and they've got a sort of a green marking. And we've got two on this side and they've got a red marking. And if I move this uh, closer, let me just try and, if I can, show you exactly how this works. So when we look at the red side of the switch here, you'll notice that the, um, the contacts here come down and by default those are connected. So this is a normally closed circuit here. And when I twist the key, if you watch what happens, that little metal spring in the middle will pop apart and so twisting the key breaks the connection. This is normally closed and you'll see that there's a, a constant circuit from this metal pin here. It goes up across this metal spring to the top there and back down to this circuit and twisting breaks that connection. On the other side, at exactly the same time, notice here that uh, on this case the, the contacts come over to the top here and there's actually a gap there. So by default on the green side there is no connection. This is a normally open connection and when I twist the key on this side they actually become connected. So we've got um, simultaneously at the same time we've got a, a pair of contacts that are normally closed and become open and on the other side we've got a pair that are normally open and become closed. So um, for this particular circuit here, the way I've got this wired is that I have um, this wire here, in fact if I just twist this around I can just show you uh, very briefly the wiring on the reverse side. You'll see that all I've got is simply uh, a wire coming out uh, from each one in turn. So I've just got a series connection here, these blue wires here, take it back around to the front again. So um, by default here I've got a circuit that is open um, and only when all of these switches are um, twisted at the same time, so when all the keys have been discovered, inserted into the correct locks and either um, turned like that and held there or if you want the behaviour to be that players actually have to simultaneously turn them at the same time, they're holding them. This forms a circuit here which connects uh, the ground signal to the uh, relay signal line in here. So I've got a ground connection here which goes to the relay signal in. This makes the relay terminal switch over and when that does, that, um, can, uh, that breaks power that's going to the maglock here from this 12 volt power supply and makes the maglock fall off. Let me show you that all in a, a wiring diagram just to make that clear again one more time. So here I've got my key switches um, like I say, I've got four, but you can use from one up to however many you want. And they are wired together in series. So I'm using the green terminal connector blocks. Remember, those are the ones that were normally open. And I'm just connecting from one side of the green terminal block here to uh, one side of the terminal block on the next key switch along. And then wiring from that one to the next one and from so on and so on in series. And then at the ends, at this end here, we've got this black line here is connected to ground of a power supply, a 5 volt power supply coming at the bottom. And on this line here, we've got this connected to the signal line of a 5 volt relay. Uh, the 5 volt relay is also wired to um, plus 5 volts on this red line here. And it's also got ground going to the ground connector here. 
Then on this side of the relay, uh, we've got a maglock, and that has got its own 12 volt power supply here. Um, it's wired directly to the negative side, and the positive side is coming to the normally closed connector and to the common terminal here. So what this means is that the default state of this puzzle is that the maglock here is receiving power from the 12 volt power supply at the top um, because the terminal here is normally closed. So that's connected to the common terminal, this connects a circuit here, and this is powered up and energized and the lock remains locked. On uh, this side of the circuit, however, when all the keys have been inserted and turned around, that is going to close all these connections here and this is going to form a continuous circuit from ground right the way around to the signal line here. Now the relay module I'm using and most common relay modules I, I've seen are what's called an active low relay. So by default they have a, a little pull up resistor on board that pulls the signal line up to 5 volts and to make the relay switch over what you need is to pull the signal line down to zero and that's exactly what's going to happen so when this circuit is closed here when all these keys are inserted and turned around we now have ground connected through to signal that is going to activate the relay and what's going to happen on this side is that it will switch over so that the common terminal is now connected to normally open instead when it does that, this circuit is broken here, the maglock is no longer receiving 12 volt power and so the um, bar falls off it. So that's about all there is to it. I mean, I really like this puzzle. I like the satisfaction of turning a key in a lock and I think that's something which a, a lot of escape room players like is that very tactile feedback. Um, and you get that in a normal padlock as well. But there's other sorts of mechanics you can incorporate into this, like I say, depending on the sort of key switches you use. So, I mean, for this puzzle to be solved, let's say, first of all, the players have had to discover the correct keys. That might have been the result of a search activity in the room or maybe of solving another puzzle. Then they have to associate the correct keys with the correct locks. And they might have actually had to discover these locks as well. They might be hidden somewhere. Now I've used a, a simple colour coding system here, but perhaps you could use uh, symbols instead or something else that players actually have to deduce which key goes in which lock. And then finally, if you use one of these momentary switches at the end, you've then introduced an element of communication and coordination as well, um, particularly if these locks are actually uh, physically distributed around the room, so it requires two or more players to simultaneously uh, turn the locks at the same time and then you've got another kind of game mechanic on there as well so you've had the the discovery the association and then the communication and coordination as well all wrapped up in what seemed like quite a straightforward puzzle um, so hopefully that's um, given you some ideas of, of ways you can include that as well um, there's not really anything else I can tell you about this puzzle. There is no code to download, there's no Arduino to use, so I've shown you everything. But if you do have any questions, please do write them uh, in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, if you like to see more escape room puzzles like this, um, please do see the other videos in this channel. Or I do have a Patreon account um, and if you feel able to support me and if you'd like to support me to make more tutorials like this in the future um, then that would be amazing if you could uh, go over and check that out. But I will uh, keep on posting my videos here for you to watch anyway. So uh, all that remains to say is uh, to thank you all very much for watching and I will see you next time. Okay, cheers, bye.